Hallelujah. He is a wonderful Savior. Come on, say that. He's sweet. Yes. He's glorious. Come on. Yes. He's faithful. Yes. He's kind. Oh, Lord. He's marvelous. Yes. He's God. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Oh, He's you. my Father. Yes. I got connections. Come on now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got connections. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I'm glad about that. I'm glad about I know Jesus. Come on. While yes. others were ashamed of him. Hallelujah. He died on their behalf in spite yes. of. While others didn't want anything to do with him. Come on. Hallelujah. He still said that I would give my life in exchange for yours. So I, I just appreciate the Savior on today. I also want to thank God for uh, the pastor of this house, Elder Abrams. I thank God for just uh, giving him a servant's heart. And I also want to thank God for the heart that he gave my brother in terms of just how he, he just believes in people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I really do, I thank God for that, I do. I thank God that God has given him a heart and a mind and a ministry that focuses on building people up. It's a, a very rare occasion, if any, if you ever see him with an ax or a sword with the intended purpose of tearing somebody down, but he's always, I've seen him you know, use the word of God to build people up even when they were in their worst state, even when it seemed as if they uh, uh, needed a spanking from God. But yet, uh, if, if, if God did not tell him to go in that direction, he was there to pour the oil and wine in their wounds and bind them up and encourage them that God is able to restore and to save. So I thank God thank for the ministry that he's given him. Um, you know, I'm not going to prolong the service any further. If you will go ahead and stand with me, um, our scripture for this evening, and we're going to come out of Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to read verses 24 through 30 and 36 through 42 when you're hearing. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 13, and um, I'm going to read verses 24 through 30, 36 through 42. Can you hear me through this mic? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. It reads, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seeds in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade uh, was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tear also. So the servants of the household of Hoder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field, from whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my home. Let us skip down to uh, verse 36. And this will be where Jesus gives the explanation of the parable. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and he went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Mm -hmm. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. 
the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be welling of uh, there shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in their in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for blessing us to be here in your presence, O oh Lord. Lord God, even as we have gathered here in your presence, Lord. We pray, Father, that you will speak and express your mind and your heart through me on today unto us, O Lord. Lord God, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that even as you send forth your word, O Lord, send it, O God, to give understanding. Send it to give strength. Send it to give direction, Lord God. And send it, O Lord, that we may know and understand the will of God. Lord God, we, O Father, hallelujah, do thank you in advance. And we thank you, we bless you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, so for a topic that I would like to speak on today and pretty much draw uh, our thought from is from verse 30, where the Lord says, let both grow together. Uh -huh until the harvest. So I would like to speak on the topic the wheat and the tear growing together. Right. The wheat and the tear growing together. Here in our text on today, Jesus gives his disciple a prophecy through a parable of what the visible church would look like in its future state which is our current state today. Jesus said that he being the good sower, so that I would like to pretty much magnify just for a brief moment Jesus is both the sower and he is the chief wheat. Come on. Being the son of God, he is the brother and of the wheat. And being raised from the dead, he became the first fruits of them which slept. Come on. Yeah. So he is both the sower mm. of the seed and he is also the chief wheat. Mm. Right. Satan himself is also a sower. And while Satan is a sower, yet he is also the chief tear. Come on. For the scriptures refer to him as one who has disguised himself as an angel of light. And so he is one who seeks to blend in with the children of light. He is one who seeks to blend in with the chief wheat. He is one who seeks to blend in with righteousness, but yet there is no light that can be found in him. There is no wheat that can be found in him. There is no righteousness that can be found in him. So therefore, he is the chief tear. Yeah. I want you to see two things here. One is that the sowing of the tear took place while men slept. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard this explained in two different lights and I have a respect for both of them. One facet that I have heard and taught is, is that when the apostles slept in their graves, the enemy was able to come and to bring about many different offshoots of Christianity because yeah. the apostles were not uh, alive uh, to pretty much defend the integrity of the gospel. So this resulted and the outcome of many false teachers as to what it means to be saved. Yeah. Even today, you can ask 10 people what it means to be saved, and 
you would do good to get seven different answers instead of ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before Paul departed from Ephesus, he called unto him the elders of the church and said unto them, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of yourselves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. This is what Paul was saying that was going to happen after his departure. He was saying once he leaves and once he is not present to be able to defend the gospel or the uh, or the foundation that he laid, that other people would come in and to, uh, with, with corrupt and damnable doctrines to turn away men after themselves or better yet to make waste come of on. God's flock come on. Come on. while men slept. Yeah. Another facet I have seen uh, uh, this perspective taught uh, concerning while men slept is the watchman falling to sleep spiritually. Mm. Over time, the labor of a watchman can cause one to become weary. Mm -hmm. And instead of receiving rest from Jesus, some yield to the temptation of becoming too relaxed in the faith. Yeah. There are some watchmen who no longer labor in prayer like the watchmen of old. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to say that any of us have to be like anybody else uh, uh, concerning our forefathers, but God gave us good examples yes, for did. a reason. Yes, Fasting isn't a common practice like it used to be. Oh, the watchmen no longer labor in doctrine like the uh, watchmen of old once did, but rather there seems to be a decline in the sound teachings of the love of God. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a decline in the sound teachings of the grace of God. There seems to be a decline in the sound teachings of the holiness of God. God is still holy yeah, in 2024. That's right. We still ought to be teaching the that's holiness right. of God. There uh, uh, has uh, been a decline in the sound teaching of the fear of the Lord. God is still to be feared and still to be reverenced right. and still to be honored in 2024. Yes, there has been a decline in the judgment of God and in the, in the sound teachings of the judgment of God. There is coming a day of reckoning. There is coming a day of judgment. And, and this has to be taught like everything else right. in the Bible. That's right, man. And one thing that has probably caused the watchman to yield to the temptation of slumber is, is that maybe the watchman has scratched his head and said, what is the use of staying up and burning the, the midnight oil to put in so many hours of study when it seems to be a decline in the appreciation of the word of God? Do we still appreciate and love the word like we once did? Come on. Do we still have a mind that, you know, uh, uh, not only am I waiting for my pastor to preach the word, but I, 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 God has something to say to me too. So therefore, I make it a priority for me to study. I make it a priority for me to read the word of God. But in 2024... We have become so laxed and we have yielded to the temptation of slumber, Sister Green, to the point to where some of us, we don't even bring our Bibles to church anymore. Yeah. yeah. It has become so common for people not even to bring their Bibles to church uh, because uh, we have gotten so used oh, yeah. to somebody just spoon feeding us the word of God. And I, this isn't me throwing off or throwing stones yeah, at nobody. Great. I just want to be able to minister the word of God. But if you can't even bring your tonight. Bible to church on a regular basis, come on, preacher. how in the world can you uh, uh, go home and study and deep dive and seek the Lord through the Holy Scriptures? Yeah. The temptation of slumber is putting many to sleep. Many are yielding to the temptation of slumber. Mm. 
And because men have fallen asleep, Jude said, for there are certain men crept in unawares mm -hmm. who were before all oh, ordained to condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, mm -hmm. denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. He is saying that there are some who have crept into our churches and he calls them ungodly men. He calls them ungodly because they teach that the grace of God allows us to be able to live sinful lifestyles. He calls them ungodly because they use the word of God uh, in a way to cause uh, the saints to stumble. They use the word of God to cause the saints to sin against God. They use the word of God to strip the saints of their fear of God. Yeah. Yeah. And so he refers to them as men who have crept in unaware and they are ungodly because of what they teach. Come on. They are ungodly because of what they influence the saints of God to do. Come on. Some might ask the question of how did they get into the church and work their way up the ranks to become teachers? How did they creep in and become our teachers? How did they creep in and become our ministers? How did they creep in and become our pastors? How did they creep in and become our prophets? Yeah. How did they creep in and become our choir directors? How did this happen? My Lord. Jesus said this happened while men slept. Mm -hmm. This happened while men yielded to the temptation of slumber. Do I got a church on Come tonight? On. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want to say this, that even those who are called do get tired. There is nothing wrong or there is nothing spiritually illegal about getting tired. I don't want that to be misconstrued as to someone thinking that I'm saying that it's not okay to be tired. It is not a sin to be tired, but uh, in some places, a business sleeping on the job will get you fired. That's yeah. right. Even if you are tired, uh, uh, it's still not okay to take a nap while you are on the clock. Come on. When those who are called by God get tired, mm -hmm. Jesus said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Yeah. 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 Not the kind of rest that allows you to abandon the labor of the kingdom, but he will give you rest that will renew your strength. Yes, he will. He will give you rest that will cause you to be able to fulfill the assignment that God has placed upon your life. You, he will put an anointing upon you that will cause you, even in your state of weariness, to be able to run on to see what the end is going to be. He will give you rest. How can someone creep into the church and work their way up the ranks and teach damnable doctrine? While men slept, they ignored the signs that this person didn't have a real heart for ministry, but it was their faithfulness that won over the watchmen. Mm -hmm. But the watchmen didn't see that uh, there was a hidden agenda that was attached in, that was associated with this person's faithfulness yeah. as they worked their way up the ranks through the church. I, I, I've seen people get promoted in the church and yep. for only just a few moments later to throw stones at the church that promoted them, yep. to, uh, to throw stones at the church that, that helped to establish them. Come on. And, and, and these were some of the most faithful people and it was their faithfulness that won over the trust yeah. of the bishop. It was their faithfulness that uh, uh, caused the bishop to recognize and to notice them and to say that they will be good for such and such position. Yeah. Oh, how man looking on the outward appearance. Come on, preacher. But God looking upon the heart. I know. There are times to where just being human, we can all together miss it. Yeah. We can all together miss the hidden agendas of people's heart. We can miss uh, uh, the depths of what people uh, uh, really intend to say and what people really intend to do within their hearts. The dangers of a watchman sleeping on the job are crucial because there is just too much at stake. Yeah. I can remember that 
uh, uh, someone came in, uh, uh, that when someone would come in with the report that they had just received the Holy Ghost, but you know, there was no witnesses there when they received the Holy Ghost. And as a church, we will rejoice with them. As a church, we will bless God with them. As a church, we will thank God for that soul being able to uh, uh, receive the new birth experience. But while we was rejoicing, uh, they was encouraged to make an appointment with the bishop. Yeah. And the bishop being a watchman over God's house, the bishop being a watchman over the flock of God, most of us who are familiar with him, we know what he would do. If there wasn't a witness there when this person said that the Holy Ghost fell upon him, what would he, what would he say in that office? He would say, uh, uh, I, I rejoice with you, brother. I rejoice with you, sister. But can I hear the Holy Ghost speak for myself? And he wasn't doing this to aim his arrows at this person's faith. He wasn't doing this to cause this person to doubt in, uh, uh, what, what just had happened to, the, uh, the, to them. But he was doing this as a watchman to ensure that uh, uh, to the best of his ability, wasn't anything creeping in unaware. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, so uh, there was also a time, if you were switching churches, mm -hmm. that there was something you needed in order to be able to change your fellowship or to uh, uh, change your membership at a different church. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the watchman would recommend that you come over with a letter of recommendation. Right. Mm -hmm. And what this right. letter of recommendation would clarify was that you left in good standing. Yeah. And let's say if you didn't leave in good standing, you left with there was some issues, there was a few marks on your reputation uh -huh. at your old assembly. <laughs> At least what this letter would do, it would inform and equip the watchman where you were going, who he was watching over, and what he had to minister to. Right. Yeah. But today, that's not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 today, what, would, what, what the leader would say is that the church that the, the individual just left from, that they just wasn't equipped enough to minister to them. Mm -hmm. Today, what they would do is they would allow this person to uh, go on a smear campaign and smear their former church while coming over to, the, to this new assembly. But this is what happened when the watchman goes to sleep. It is while men are sleeping that the enemy comes in and sows his seed. I want you to take note of what he does once he is finished sowing. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that after the devil has sown the tares among the wheat, he went his way. Mm -hmm. I want you to take note of that, is that after the enemy sowed the tares among the wheat, he went his way. Why is that so significant? I find uh, uh, that very interesting uh, that the devil does not stick around to see if his seed is going to carry out his will. Mm. And the reason why I find that interesting is, is because he is confident that he can keep going. Mm. He is confident that, thank you, he is confident that after he has sown tear among the wheat and he keeps going, and the reason why he is so confident is because he is familiar with his seed. He knows what he has put down on the inside of his seed. He knows that he doesn't have to be present in the church for his will to go forth in the church as long as his seed is in the church. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The devil doesn't have to be present to keep up confusion as long as his seed is present. The devil does not have to be present to sow discord as long as his seed is present. That's right. He understands the power of his seed. Because he knows what is in his seed, he can trust his seed to carry out his will. This is why Jesus said that the prince of this world cometh and he findeth nothing in me. Jesus said this because when the devil tried Jesus, 
The enemy could not find anything uh, uh, that was in Jesus that, the, that he could exploit because Jesus was not born of the seed of the devil. That's right. But he was born of the seed of God, which is the word of God. Amen. I want to talk to the seed of God for a moment. Can your father trust you to do his will? Come on. Can your father trust you to live holy? I need an amen from the seat of God on tonight. Amen. Can your father trust you to bless him at all times, even when you don't feel like it? Can your father trust you not to quit, but rather run this race to the very end to see what it's going to be? Can your father trust you, O oh seed of God? You, Can your father have confidence in you that you will not faint, that you will not give up, but yet that you will endure until the very end? Can your father trust you when you are in the workplace to represent him, when there's no one else there to represent him, when everyone is using the name of Jesus Christ in vain? When they are blaspheming God, when they are refusing to live holy, can God trust you? Can he trust you to hold up the bloodstained banner and say in 2024 that Jesus still saved? Can you be trusted? Can the Father trust his seed on tonight? I also want you to notice something else about the enemy is that after he has sown his seed, he doesn't stick around to see if it's going to grow. Some of us, uh, when it comes to growth, there is a very strong concern as to whether or not if, if, if some of us are growing at the pace where God will have us to grow. Uh, sometimes when it comes to growth in the church, and Sister Green, your testimony really did resonate with my spirit. In that testimony, I could almost hear uh, 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 the, the, the voice of God saying that there are some of us that need to do our first works over again. Uh, but uh, Because of, even when it comes to growth in the body of Christ, there are some who feels as if growth is not necessary. Mm -hmm. There are some who feels as if growth is just showing up to church and hearing the word and leaving out and not necessarily applying the word. No need for the application of the word, but just hearing the word of God is just good enough. But with the enemy, he's not concerned about whether or not if his seed is going to grow. He has a lot of confidence that after, his, after he leaves uh, the seed that he has sown in the church, that not only will it grow, but it will grow to the point and blend in with those that are the true wheat of God. He is fully confident that his seeds will grow amongst the seeds of God. How can you be so confident that the seeds of unrighteousness will be comfortable enough to grow in a righteous environment? Mm -hmm. How can you be so confident that the seeds of darkness will be able to grow comfortably in, the, in, in an environment that is full of light? How can you be so comfortable that the, a seed that is full of deceit and lies will be able to grow in a place where there is nothing but truth coming forth? My Lord. The enemy is very bold, very bold. Come on. So bold that he leaves his children in the midst of the children of God and says that they're going to be all right. He's so bold that he will leave his children in an environment believing that they have enough power to flip the environment that he left them in. That they have enough power to influence the environment that he left them in. That they have enough power to change the atmosphere of the environment that he left them in. This is why we have to grow, church. That's right. We don't have a choice but to grow. Yes. Because when you're not growing and the enemy seed is growing amongst us, then yes, yeah. the enemy seed will be the dominant seed that will influence yeah. the visible church. My God. This is why uh, also when uh, 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 the servants uh, saw the tear growing up with the wheat, they were concerned. They ran to their master and said, Master, we know that you sowed good seed, but somebody had sowed some tares amongst your good seed. And we see the blade springing up. 
would you have us to go out there and uproot some of this stuff? And the master looked at them out of concern, out of concern for the wheat and said, let them alone. Let them both grow up together. Let them both come up together. And this is what I love about Jesus, is that even though the enemy is confident that his seed is able to grow up amongst the seeds of righteousness, Jesus is also confident yeah. that his seed is able to grow up amongst the seeds of Abraham. Right. Right. Jesus is, a, and is also confident that his seed is also able to yeah. influence the seeds of unrighteousness and to convert and flip them. Come yeah. on, come on. Jesus knows what he has put down on the inside of every single one of us. This is why the Bible says that them that are born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him. His word remaineth in him. Yeah. When he says that you can't sin, what he's talking about is, is that you can't go out living and practicing a lifestyle of sin because of the seed of God is going to challenge that sinful lifestyle. And if you really want to be saved, the that seed, that word that is in you is not going to allow you to be able to rest in a sinful state. Right. He's confident in his seed. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. He's confident yeah. in his seed. Yeah. He's so confident in his seed that he will allow for his seed to be the only seed on the job saved and sanctified oh and Holy Ghost field, oh believing that his Glory. seed Hallelujah. has what it takes in order to flip an ungodly environment yeah. on the workforce. Come on. Come on. His seed. My Lord. He believes that his seed, hallelujah, is able to go out and lay hands on the sick on. and the sick will recover. He believes that his seed is able to get results. Come on. Amen. He believes that his seed is able to cast out devils yeah. because of he knows the power Glory. that is in his seed. Yes. So Jesus tells them, he says, let them grow up together. Mm -hmm. One, because he has confidence in his seed. The other thing that is mentioned here in scripture is that what could potentially happen to his seed if he sent out his servants prematurely before the harvest to go and uproot the tear. Because in one place, Jesus said, every plant that my father, my heavenly father did not plant, it's, he's going to uproot it. So he's not worried about the false slack. He's going to deal with them when that time comes. But the other thing, the reason why he was saying let them grow up together was is because he did not want to run the risk of some of the wheat being plucked up with the tear. The enemy, it, 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 it blends in so well that Jesus understood that you not necessarily knowing the heart That's right. of man you will potentially end up uprooting the wrong, uh, 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 the wrong plant, so to say. Yeah. Instead of uprooting the tear, you will end up uprooting some of the wheat. Take note that the wheat is not segregated from the tear, but the Lord suffers them to grow together. A couple of weeks ago, I was having a conversation with my daughter, Aziz, and I could hear the, the disappointment and yet concerned in her voice when she was telling me about a sermon that she was listening to on YouTube. And she expressed and explained to me how this individual was just so obviously off, but yet the audience amen him as if he was an angel speaking from heaven. Uh, we are living in a day where it is hard to know who is who and what is what. It is hard to tell the difference between the Peters of today yeah. who deny the Lord from lack of faith versus the Judases of today whose heart are wicked and they betray the Lord for money and because of they are really the agents of Satan. Mm -hmm. They betray the Lord because they see church as uh, uh, just as big business. Come on. Peter said that they will look at you and that they will see you as merchandise. That when they look at you there, they cannot see past 
what you're able to bring in in Come terms on. of an offering. They cannot see past your wallet. They can't see past your pocketbook. Uh, uh, yeah, they can look past all of your bills. Yeah. They can look past all of the past due notices that you got in the mail, but they can't look past your paycheck. Come on, yeah. So we're living in a day to where it is very difficult to tell the differences between the Peters who really do want to be saved, but yet uh, uh, they, they, they might, uh, uh, but could, due to lack of faith, they might deny the Lord mm -hmm. uh, uh, versus a Judas who betrays him. It's hard to tell the difference between a, a, a King David, the King Davids of today who failed God versus uh, 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 the Saul's, uh, the King Saul's of today. The King Davids who received true restoration from God versus the King Saul's of today who the Lord cast away, but yet they just refused to sit down. Yeah. It's hard to tell the difference today. Even with discernment, oh, your discernment has to be on today. Uh, because if, if your discernment isn't on today, you will end up calling tear wheat and wheat tear. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, if you go on YouTube and just look up Christian content, you will see everybody condemning everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. You will see everybody discrediting everybody. Yeah. You will see false prophets calling out false prophets. Mm -hmm. You will see tear calling out wheat. You will, you, you will see wheat calling out wheat. Mm -hmm. You will see the true preachers of God calling out other true preachers of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, 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 the reason for this is, or let, let, not, let me not get so ahead of myself. But one, thing, one, one other thing that I want to point out real quick is we'll see all of this call out, right? But one thing that it is rare to see, it's rare to see preachers praising other preachers. No, no. It, it, it's rare to see saints complimenting other saints. It, it, it's rare to see the people of God complimenting each other about how well someone's ministry is going. Yeah, it's an upstart ministry, but God is with them. And what I want y'all to do, saints, is I want y'all to go over and to support them and pour into that ministry because I know that man of God and God is with that man of God. And I know that God has called him to a work and let's help the work prevail. Oh, that's a rarity of today. It's rare to see saints uplifting each other, but if you go into somebody else's church today, the, the first thing that they're looking at is, is do you shout like they shout? Come on. Uh, uh, do, is, is your dress code up to par as, as, oh as their by, church bylaw, bylaw dress codes are up to oh par? God. It, it, it is a rare thing to see the saints complimenting and praising each other. Yes. Yes, but the reason why, why this is so rare it's because of everybody is confused. Mm -hmm. But yet, this is the job of the terror saints. Yeah. They have been planted by Satan to make the church appear to be a bunch of unstable hypocrites. Yeah. Oh so that when the world does go on YouTube, the visible church looks very unstable. Oh, the visible church looks like they need some folks to come in and minister to them. Yeah. The visible church looks like they need some folks to come in and to counsel and to guide them. Am I preaching on tonight, church? Amen. 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 And so, as I was scrolling through YouTube, every once in a while, I'm on YouTube as well, Pastor. And not only every once in a while, maybe, to, maybe sometimes too much. But as I was scrolling through YouTube, one of the things that caught my eye was sister, I seen a, a, a group of uh, so-called Christians, and you look, listen to me, I'm saying so-called. The tear has done this. <laughs> but I've seen a group of so-called Christians in a nightclub jamming. Yes. And as, as they was jamming to their music, filling up this nightclub, mimicking the uh, uh, nightclub of the world, and I mean, you would have to see it. That it, it was very dark in there, and the only lights that were on was just the dim lights. Mm -hmm. Because it's a nightclub. It had the same feeling, the same look, and everything. And even if, when, when you saw them grooving, when, if, if, if you didn't have the volume up, you didn't know what they was dancing to. Oh, but when I went down to the comments, I noticed that some people said that this is not the behavior of those who have been called out of the world to represent the name of God. 
And then there was other people in the comments, they was arguing back and forth with each other. Uh, and it was other people in the comment that was saying that, uh, listen, if these young people are choosing to praise God in this way, even at a nightclub, so what? Let everything that have breath praise you the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so what a confusing message that this sends to someone who is yeah. coming out of the world yeah. right. trying to escape the pollution of the nightclub right. just to come over here and hear somebody says that the nightclub is all right with Jesus. My Lord. What a confusing message. Yeah. But mm -hmm. this is the job of the tear yeah. is to cause all kind of confusion to where if someone wants to be saved, it makes it very difficult for somebody to understand and see clearly how to truly be Come saved. On. Yes. Come on. If you ever ask me my opinion, on whether, uh, uh, on, on whether or not if a saint should be at the nightclub, I will tell you that this is terror-like behavior. Come on. And that the only nightclub a saint should attend is a Sunday evening service. Come on. Amen. Amen. The only nightclub that a saint should be found in is an all-night prayer service. Right. The only nightclub that a saint should be found in is a midnight revival service. Right. And even uh, 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 with that, it's not even considered a nightclub because of the light of God is filling the place. Amen. And because of we are children of the day, it's a big club. Even if we hold service at midnight. When the world sees all of these church uh, scandals, uh, they can't discern the difference that uh, between the wheat and the tear. So they charge the church of God with folly. Right. When the world sees these church scandals, they can't say that, yeah, this man over here, he doesn't represent all the church. He doesn't represent the, uh, the righteousness of God. He doesn't represent what true holiness looks like. They can't discern that. And so they throw the entire church, the visible church, into one big bucket. And, and they charge the church with folly. But the church of God is yet rather holy and set apart. Even though the world might charge her with folly, she is sanctified and upright. Even though the world might be confused about who she is, she is a reflection of the glory of God in the earth. She is the salt of the earth called to preserve this world. She is a city that is hid on a hill that cannot be hid. She is not a harlot, but she is a chaste virgin unto her bridegroom. Oh, While the tear's mission is to make it appear that the Lord's church is a loose woman and that God is okay with it, which would, uh, with, which would result in the world blaspheming God. Yeah. That's what that results in. When the tear makes it appear that the church is a loose woman that God is okay with. The world in return blasphemes God. And this is how Satan launches his warfare against God through his seed. But as for the tear, uh, uh, Jesus said, let them grow together until the day of the harvest. For the harvest will be a day of separation. The harvest will be the day when the Lord, hallelujah, will separate the tear. Come on. The harvest will be the day uh, uh, when the Lord said, the tear will, will, will uh, 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 say unto him, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Uh -huh. Know ye not that the tear can prophesy? Come on. They say, in, in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name have we not done many wonderful works? Then he's going to profess unto the tear, I never knew you. You are not my seed. Uh -huh. You are not the wheat. You are not the fineness of the wheat of God. You are not the bread of life. You are not the seed of God. You are not the light of God. You are not the child of righteousness. Yeah. You are not the child of the king. You are not a priestly child. Oh my God. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. This is why Paul said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Yeah, sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Because during the harvest, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels. And they are going to gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them 
which do iniquity, and they shall cast them into a furnace of fire, and there shall be well in a gnashing of teeth. This is why we cannot become discouraged nor allow ourselves to be influenced by the terror. Yeah, I know Lord. I'm preaching. Come on, because as for the wheat, he is going to gather them into his barn, which is the uh, which is the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. My Lord. He who has ears to hear, let, let him hear. Amen. The wheat growing together with the tear. God bless you. Amen. Amen.